arguing with people in English. It's, yeah, and you're even like, better than yeah. them now. <laughs> For me I went there for an interview but I found the way <laughs> everything was bad <laughs> in the server You're not soft yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Mr Eric let's get uh, let's get it started man So what's going yes. on Yes So I've got this new initiative where I am uh, it's called the, Eng- the engineering engineering in Africa podcast So Okay what i'm trying to do is like i've always been curious on like how other engineers you know apart from like south africa um how other engineers say in zimbabwe uganda or whatever like how yeah. do they like like what's their um, like their engineering industry like you know that was the first yeah. thing and then the second thing was um i've always had I'm always like in conversations with different engineers asking for advice. I think you've also like pre- uh, you know previously like asked for advice on like yeah. okay how can I do this um how should I do this and so forth right. So yes. m- my whole the whole idea of the podcast was to say okay why can't we have like a podcast that where like um i can like talk to engineers i can um you know like literally um like share my uh, like my insights as well on certain aspects that engineers have problems with right yeah. so the reason why I, i i wanted to talk to you was because i i think like your journey um kind of what's your original country Congo, DRC. Congo. Yeah, so for me like I was like very intrigued by how you you went from you know from Congo DRC um like that whole journey on okay like w- what what motivated you to to move out of Congo and now that you've moved out of Congo um where did you go you went to SA and yes. when you your your experience in sa your your tips for the guys in congo if they, like if somebody is in the drc and they wanna be an engineer just like you in sa like what did you do to like to to transition from the drc to uh what you call to to south africa okay. and also i think even south africans and people from other african countries will be interested to say okay how did you how did you then transition from south africa to where you are right now you know and how's the journey so far like what have you learned and yeah so that's how i was saying that um I don't want it it's not going to be like super formal cuz you <laughs> you're asking <laughs> you're asking for uh, notes and preparations and all of that you know? um, yeah. I had to know what I'm uh, I'm going to face because when you have to face a successful engineer and smart like you you have to <laughs> <laughs> you have to be prepared yeah no I don't worry cuz Uh, I, I think mm-hmm. I think I wanted to I wanted these things to like feel natural like unscripted yes. you know mm-hmm. like it's just a conversation and from the conversation then yeah and then we just take that conversation and at the end when we do the editing we'll see like which messages are like very important cut and chop yes. and then um yeah obviously we'll share it with you before we publish so that you can see like what what we publishing and then if you're happy or there's certain things you you want to cut out or whatever you know what i mean yes, yes. um yeah. is the the video okay yeah it's okay oh, like it's today. yeah no it's okay yeah, but are, are you seeing okay. my are you seeing my crystal clear video and then you think <laughs> yes <laughs> you, because you i can feel... <laughs> see you very clear and me i'm dark so yeah. I don't know if it will be okay or nah, should I change the position. Don't worry look about for it. Some light. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I've got a I've got a big light shining on me. Uh-huh. So I've got uh, I've got this whole setup. Uh, <laughs> I I even have a a whole 
podcasting mic and everything. Oh, you see, you were prepared <laughs> and I wasn't. So, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So, so, to, so let's start who, here. Who are you? I'm Eric and um, my name, my full name is Eric Kabakani Ilunga. I, I studied electrical engineering. Um, I started in Congo from... Um, uh, high school, so I got my matrix in electrical in electronics, and Wait, then in, um, in Congo, in Congo, yes. Okay. And then I went to university in Congo. I studied electrical engineering, where I got my diploma, my national diploma, and then. Um, as everyone else after the diploma, you're looking for a job to just start life before you move forward with school, but that didn't happen for me. It was a bit difficult. I tried left and right, but um, every time you go for an interview, they tell you you are a suitable candidate, but if you spoke English, that would have been very well for us. Mm. So I was like, okay, um, I need to learn English, but learning English in, in a French country is like um, chasing a car by foot. So I'm like, okay, let me go to South Africa and I should mo- do my bachelor degrees there. So I went to South Africa Mainly it was to learn English and do my my bachelor degree. And then I decided to stay there and work there. But it still was not easy to get a job because you have to fight between the language, the the formality of papers. You need a lot of visas and Mm. all those things. But I managed to... um, get proper papers and after I st- after school because um, when I got to South Africa, I studied at UJ. I was admitted at UJ, which... Uh, With no yes. English. And you didn't know <laughs> no, how to speak English. Thing. When, when I got to South Africa, normally every student that comes to South Africa must... Um, register for English school. Most of people goes to ABC in Johannesburg. Oh, okay. You register there, you study English for one year, mm-hmm. and then you can be admitted in a university. But what happens to me was um, when I got to South Africa, I started translating my papers, my Um, national diplomas and my metric uh, certificate in English and then um, get the uh, SACO qualifications, uh, the evaluation of papers. And then while I was waiting for that, instead of going to an English school, I stayed home and I was learning English from home. Mm which was kind of difficult because I was staying at my uncle's and his rule was English outside, French in my house because he <laughs> wanted he wanted his um, kids yeah. to speak English and French. So kids speak English at school, but when they come home, they need to hear some French. Yeah. So it was difficult for me because the kids spoke very well English. So mm. I had to speak English with them, but I have to speak French because it's the rule of the house. <laughs> so I was yeah. reading books, watching movies, and going out with the kids, like at the park, talking to people. And in about six months, my English was <laughs> much better. Was much better because yeah. even people in the shop they knew me that I didn't speak English and then about six months they were like, Whoa, man, you went to <laughs> no English at all to uh 
arguing with people in English. It's, yeah, and you're even like, better than yeah. them now. <laughs> so because my English, I was like learning it from books. So I knew the spellings, I knew um, the grammar. I mm. I was like self learning, but uh, I had everything in order. So when I went to UJ for uh, registration, there was one paper missing. They were like, okay, you're coming from a French country. We need to see your English certificate. Mm. Otherwise, you're not going to get registered. That was difficult. So you know it's a rule. You don't have the English certificate. We're not okay. going to register you. Mm. But lucky me, because it was a late registration, and I had paid the, um, the late registration fee, I went to see the head of the department. Because then the, the school was or had already started, like I was one week late. So the head of the department had to sign to say, okay, you are one week late. You didn't miss out much, so you can catch up. So the department wanted the signature of the, the HOD, HOD to yeah. say, yes, oh, he can go. So there was... Two choices: either you go to the HOD, he signed for for the whole department, or you go to all the lectures on the subject that you have registered and mm. say, "Sir, I have missed out for one week. Can I still register?" And then he signed. Yeah. So I went to the HOD. It's much easier, one person. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and he was a he was a pretty much very well educated he had he is he's a professor in electrical engineering so who, who was, this? was um what was his name um he has passed away i i don't oh. remember his name he was very old yeah so i went i spoke with him and he was just relax he was like okay so you missed out one week uh, and then he looked at my subject he's like um oh you can catch up very quickly mm. and then he took my papers and signed and then before i went out of his office i was like sir there's one more thing um kind of stuck i never went to school for english so they need mm. my english certificate what mm. can i do should i just deregister and mm. then go back to learn English or what? Yeah. He's like, oh, your English is pretty good for me. <laughs> so I think, and then he made the note to say his English is good. Just carry on. Um, <laughs> get it out, yes. Yeah. And then I went back and then they registered me. I started school. I was speaking fluent English. I could communicate. Mm. I thought that until <laughs> I went in a class and the teacher was there talking. Oh man, I couldn't hear a word. Mm. Sure. That was a different kind of English, you know. It's I don't know if because I was scared, but it, yeah, it, it took was me not, like a week yeah. to get used to teacher's accent and mm. you know when you learn. English from home and talking to people on the street. You learn normal English and then you get to school. It's an engineering English. It's something else, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, but um, electrical engineering, it's pretty much, you know, like in French, when we study, we say, le uh, condensateur, c'est charge, c'est décharge, and then you get there and then uh, they say capacitors charge and discharge. Mm. You can hear a bit, it's almost the same thing. So I was mm. like, okay, one week later, I could understand and everything. Yeah. So, yes, the school went well. I graduated from UJ. Mm. Um, and then it was now the 
um, job hunting. <laughs> yeah. So before we go go to the job hunting, I just wanted to go back a little. Um, yeah. Uh, in DRC, what was the the name of your high school? Just to give yes, context, because um, because uh, the reason is, remember, as I say, like um, you know, there the, there might be some kid from DRC from your school listen who might possibly listen to this podcast and you know they might get yes. inspired or whatever so what was the yeah. high school that you went to so um the high school i went to it was called um ET de linear corp okay. um i don't know how to translate that the ET stands for um um uh, um Technical Institute and Industrial, oh, something like okay. that. That's okay, just, okay. Yeah. So, so it will be if if <clears throat> I had to think of South Africa, it will be like the TVET colleges, the technical colleges that we have. Similarly, yes. maybe. Yeah. Yes, but in high school, so it's, yeah. Um, like in grade nine, you already start with all yeah. these electrical. Yeah, Italo, it's TVET. Things. Yes. Yeah, it's the it's the TVET colleges, mm-hmm. and then okay. and then and then st- straight from that your technical college, you yes. you 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 did not do any other um, like um, varsity in TRC. I did. I went okay. to ISTA in Kinshasa because. The high school was in another province. Yeah. It was in a town called Mbujimai. Okay. The uh, world capital of diamond. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> and then um, because there was no um, electrical engineering at the university there, I yeah. went to Kinshasa, which is the capital city. Yeah. Then I went to uh, a university called ISTA. Okay. Um, it's also uh, almost the same thing as uh, ETE, and this time is ISTA. Okay. And that way I got my national diploma in electrical engineering. Oh, okay. Then mm-hmm. after your national diploma, came to SA to do a bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree, yes. Oh, I understand. I understand. Okay. And then yes. you, you, you from which town or... Like in the TRC, where are you from? Like the um, is it is are you from like the rural, the townships, or the suburbs? Or okay, it's yeah. um in DRC. Yes, we have suburbs, and but we don't have townships and okay. rural. I think we have rural and suburbs. Okay. So I am from the rural, yeah. <laughs> not from the suburbs. You're not soft, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I was educated like from the suburbs because okay. I had an army of brothers, big brothers and uncles. Yeah. So you don't play. It's school or nothing. So yeah. it's school, church, and discipline at home. Yeah. So it was kind of this suburb from the yeah. <laughs> so so you said that the the motivation to come to SA was um what was mostly to learn english yes it was mostly to because for me i, I still had to go back to do my bachelor's degree but i was like okay all the jobs interview I go to, they advise me to speak English because oh, if see. you need to, if you need to go to Vodacom, most companies are, and all the new technologies are in English, and oh, I see. all the big investors, companies, they prefer people who speak English because they are engineers. They speak English. Speak English. So this is yes. this is in this is in the TRC. In the DRC, oh, but it's okay. a French country, yes. Yeah. So it was it's it's kind of an advantage. There's a lot of people who has nice jobs but they don't speak English. It yeah. depends, but it was like an an advice, like you you you're still young, you should learn some English, you'll get a nice position. Okay. So I was like, okay, instead of just learning English, let me go back to school. Yeah. Get my bachelor's degree, 
and learn English on the way. So yeah. what can I do? I'm like, South Africa is the best it's the way best to way. go. Yeah. So, yes. But how, how, how are the, like when you compare like the varsities in um, the DRC and mm -hmm. South Africa, how, like how do they compare in terms of like the quality of the curriculum and the quality of the the lecturers and the infrastructure okay um let's start with infrastructures mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um drc's universities are still the one left by belgium colony okay. and no maintenance but the the education side it we have qualified professors qualified everything but mm. we do not have um materials oh, okay. curriculums are like still old the one belgium the old, left us. okay i see i don't know if you have met a lot of congolese educated people, you'll find out that if he's a mechanical engineer, he's not only a mechanical specialist. Mm. He can touch left and right. Yep. That's like the Congolese curriculum. They don't make you focus on one thing and you learn a lot about that thing. Okay. It's in Like in metric, I had like um, 17 subjects. Sure. For my uh, metric, and, you know, and, and, and the and the kids in South Africa are struggling with seven. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? So it's it's in Congo we have like a lot of subject, and sometimes you ask yourself, okay, I'm, I'm I want to be an electrical engineer, yeah. and why are you teaching me this? Why is it gonna help me? You have yeah. geography in electrical engineering, and if you fail one subject, you 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 fail the whole year. It's not like in South Africa where um, you are at UJ, you fail one subject, then you, you pass other subjects. Yeah. Yes. In Congo, you fail one subject, you fail the year. Sure. So you pass these other subjects because you need to be an electrical engineer. Mm. There are those compulsory subjects, like um, out of those 17 there's like 10 compulsory subjects. You fail one of them. You, you repeat the year. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So now yes, let's let's fo uh, let's fast forward. So now you've got mm. your, your degree from UJ. So the yeah. biggest challenge, as you're saying, um, from uh, what you call from the DRC was that uh, you, you couldn't speak English. So you decided to yeah. stay in South Africa to try to job hunt in, uh, do the job hunting yeah. in South Africa. So how did in that how did that go? <laughs> <laughs> not not good at all. <laughs> was it, it worse? Was me... it was it worse that was it worse uh, than uh, DRC or was it much better? Um it okay it's it, it had some similarities. Yeah. But it was more difficult in South Africa because you in South Africa, you'll basically get a job. You yeah. go to the interview, they call you, they say your interview was very well, you were our candidate. But <laughs> the guy that came behind you, the yeah. second guy in yeah. our short list, he's still a student, but yeah. he's a South African citizen. That's right. So yeah. by law. We need to take a South African citizen well, over, because over he's going to graduate this year. Yeah. You have graduated. We should have taken you, but we are not in rush. So we don't yeah. want to be uh, against the law. So yeah. we're going to take the South African citizen. Quick, quick, so quick, quick, quick question. <laughs> quick, quick, quick question. When you started your bachelor's, how old were you? I was old, very old. I was like, hmm. 26 <laughs> 26 yeah cuz yes. a lot of cuz uh, cuz that's what I was um sort of thinking as well that you know some some south africans they actually graduate yeah. at like 22 23 so yes. by the time I, you I graduated yeah. at 23 for my um for the my national diploma yes yeah. 
yeah so mm-hmm. so so theoretically you you were supposed to be uh, applying for jobs where you you have like four years three years experience exactly <laughs> you see and always when you go for a job they ask you oh you have four years gap what yeah. are you doing like, yeah job hunting <laughs> yeah because <laughs> Because I, I think I will also look at it that way. Like, if yes. you were to come and you're saying you're applying for a graduate entry-level position yes. and and you're like 26, 27, I, then I start thinking, hey, yeah, yeah, this guy is going to give me problems. I think some of the, some of the rejections were, were, I think, were in a lot of event. them. Yeah. I had, I had, um, these jobs offers mm. where the HR send you all the paperwork, but they retract them. And when you call them wanting to know, okay, what went wrong? Mm. They tell you because your direct manager is much younger than you. <laughs> so he's kind of, <laughs> you know, he's like, I, yeah. this guy is, Old like this. I, <laughs> I, I, I get <laughs> it. He's gonna yeah. give me trouble. So it's, I get it. Yes. Yeah. So now you you job hunt. What was your first job that you got in SA? My first job that I got, um, I can't call it a job. It was kind of um, because I was applying a lot of jobs that I was getting a response to because mm. when you apply for jobs, you don't get any call. Yeah. But most of jobs that I was getting um, calls from was clinical engineering. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, I get a lot of response and I read a lot about clinical engineering. Let me go volunteer. Because I was staying in Pretoria, I went to to Steve Biko. Okay. I spoke to the um, technical uh, clinical technician that stays there, uh, that works there. He's like, okay, the technical manager is on leave, mm-hmm. but we can give him a call so that he can arrange. So. Uh, we gave him a call. He was like, okay, well, you can spend a month with us. So for them, I was volunteering so that I can get familiar with all these equipment and yeah. how it works in hospitals. But for me, I had a politician card there because mm. I knew um, uh, the government always recruits. And when they recruit, they train, and then yeah. they dispatch in different hospital. Yeah. So I was like, okay, if I'm in already volunteering, it's yeah. easy for me to see when the recruitment comes. That's correct. And I yeah. can easily apply and yeah. say, okay, I'm volunteering already here. Yeah. You see, so it was. My so it goal. was a good, that was a good strategy, man. Okay, before we yes. carry on um, uh, with that strategy, I wanna cause. I can see that my Zoom is going to cut me off. Remember, it has this 40 minutes thing, so I don't have the premium. Oh, so okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end, I'm gonna start another meeting, and then okay. and then we're gonna um, carry we, I'm gonna send you the link and then we'll um uh, what you call we will start on that resume. yeah okay. on uh, resume on that new meeting and then yeah and then have have our part two sorry about that yes sir <laughs> part two part two we back yes. so yeah man so far so good um i'm loving it i'm loving it man um all right so we were talking about the i think you you were speaking about the your strategy on getting a job like right now, there's like there's a lot of graduates who are, I don't know, I I don't know if complaining is the right word, but who are saying that they can't find jobs. Like people just can't find jobs. South Africans in South Africa can't find jobs. You know. And, yes. Um, so what I are, had a lot of friends that I studied with that had the same problem. Yeah. And most of them are the ones 
that were not um, uh, retained after they are uh, in service training. Yeah. If you are lucky enough from your in service training, you are the company keeps you. It does. Then right. you, yes. But if the company releases you, then pretty it's much screwed. Yeah. Difficult to get another job, and hmm. most of companies they just uh, advertise for positions hmm. and. Two years later, you find the same position. We are looking for an electrical yeah. engineer. You apply, no response. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I get you. So, uh, so that that strategy of volunteering did it work? Um. So I volunteered, and one month down the line, I saw and I learned a lot, and I was enjoying it. <laughs> And I, one or two months later, I saw a group of newcomers in yeah. the workshop. Uh, they were hired already. I'm like, okay, when did they recruit them? Yeah. And when did it happen? And I'm here. I don't know when did it happen? Mm. When did they interview people? So I was like, oh, okay, and the next will happen maybe in two years. Mm. So I can't keep volunteering for two years. Yeah. And it's the government. They don't just hire. Mm. If it was private, maybe the manager would have sent a request to say, okay, we need this guy, but this is the government. So yeah. I, I just stayed home, mm. <laughs> no more volunteering, <laughs> but at least I learned a lot in yeah. clinical engineering and those that, that what helped me in the next interviews, when I went for interviews, I went for a lot of uh, uh, net care interviews yeah. and 98% um, of them, they were successful. Mm. I went for like ten what, or seven interviews. So what what does successful mean? You you got a job offer. Uh, successful means for me at that time it yeah. was not getting the, the job offer. It was getting that email that says we loved uh, the managers liked your uh, prestation, your yeah. personality, and your mind, and we gonna let you know <laughs> so when well, they say we're gonna let you, let know, you know, know, already know it's yeah. done but sometimes they come for the second time and they call mm. you for the second interview and it, they interview you again and then the hr send you some paperwork to fill in because you are uh you've been shortlisted yeah okay they are looking for two people but they have shortlisted three okay yeah. so I have so you've got a good a chance, of yeah. Successful, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then just to find out that I'm the third one, <laughs> <laughs> and they take the other thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, it so was how a be, between um, the time you graduated and you got the volunteer, um, let's say position, like how long was how long did that take you? Okay, I graduated in 2013. Yeah. And it's in 2014 that I uh, had that idea of volunteering. Mm -hmm. And because it didn't work out, and after all those other interviews, uh, sometimes the HR calls you. They say, okay, uh, we need your paperwork. And then you bring the paperwork, you have a study permit. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I was going to ask you that, um, that at that time, did you have your, yes. your, your critical skills visa or something? No, no, no. I still had the, the, uh, the study permit. The study permit, oh, okay. Yes, yeah. from, from UJ. Yeah. So sometimes the hr doesn't want to go through those paperwork of hiring someone with a study permit yeah. they need to give you 
uh, uh, necessary paperwork for you to go to the home affairs to apply yeah. for a work permit. Yeah. So they they just look at the study permit. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's too much. I, I, I've had that experience. <laughs> like, I, I don't want, I don't want uh, the study permits. Yeah. That's why. That's why I said a lot of them were successful because you'll get to the point where they say, okay, here is the offer, and. Can we have your uh, ID, copy of your ID? And then because they see you are from Congo, can we have your work permit? And then you yeah. send the copy of your study permit. They're like, Ay. I see. No, I you see. see this and that. Yeah. Because there's a government law that says if a company hires um, a foreigner mm-hmm. and they want to apply for a work permit for him, they need to prove that they have advertised for that position and for no more South than African. six months. Yeah. And there's no South African who qualifies. Sure, Not only who qualifies, but even a South African that can get trained yeah. for that position. Yeah. So they can take a South African that is in S3 doing his last year or S4 Mm. He can be trained while he's obtaining his diploma. So I see. that's I see. a very difficult law to bypass when you want to hire a foreigner with a visa, yeah. uh, with a study with a st- visa. A study so, visa, yeah. Yes. All right. So then from there, you got a job eventually. Um, I My study visa expired. So I was like, okay, I'm in South Africa. The next move is to get a job because if you get a job, then you can apply for a work permit because yeah. it's a bit complicated then. When you go for a job interview, they tell you, if you had the work permit, we would have hired you. But at the but same to time... to get a work permit, <laughs> they say you need a job to get a work permit. So I got was, you. Yeah. So I... I decided to go back to Congo. Mm. I was like, okay, the visa expired. I can't get a new visa. The only condition to get a new visa is to go back to school, yeah. register again, maybe do master's. I'm like, I will study until when? Yeah. I need to work a bit because mm. I'm getting old and no experience. And the time, no yeah, yeah, yeah. The time yes. is running out. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So I went back to Congo. Mm. I tried to apply for jobs there. And um, everyone that sees you, they look at you like, okay, uh, we're looking for a way out of DRC and you are coming back. And surprisingly, all my friends that I found there, that I left there, they were like five steps ahead of me. Mm. They were they had nice jobs, they were driving. I was like, okay, so South Africa made me so late. <laughs> now I speak English, I have a degree, <laughs> but I am way behind from them. So it's difficult to compete with them. Let me go back there and fight more. Yeah. So now I went to the South African consulates. I look at the conditions for critical skills and I qualified. So mm. I had a bachelor degree from South Africa and I was a, an engineering candidate from EXA. Yeah. And I had that certificate with me. I was like, okay, let me try. Mm. I applied for a critical skills visa. They told me it will take uh, eight weeks to process mm. But three days later, they called me saying, oh, your visa was approved. You can call, come and collect. I'm like, oh, okay. Let me go back. To <laughs> and this, is, oh, this was the critical skills visa? Yes. Oh, okay. And that allows, then you don't need a work permit once you have that. It's um, the critical skills visa it, because South Africa um, labor has a, a list of skills uh skilled um how do you Short, call it sh- uh, shortage short or, or deficit yes, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly so electrical engineering is part of it okay so 
for them, it was easier for them because I studied in South Africa and mm. I had the um, EXA certificate. So they're like, oh, this is a familiar from South mm. Africa. Yeah. Him a visa. Yeah. So I got the critical skills visa. I went back to South Africa, back to job hunting. I started mm. calling back all the companies that t- told me, if you had a, a work yeah, permit, work permit we would yeah. 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 yes. Or they came up with another story. Oh, you have a critical skills work permit. Oh, mm. if you had a permanent residence. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> so the, oh, the goalpost keeps moving and there. moving and moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Um, but from there, I didn't take long mm. because mm. just when I got to South Africa, I sent um, my new numbers to my um, uh, school colleagues and friends because when I was uh, job hunting, I was twittering uh, um, students from different universities. I started with UJ. Yeah. But um, they were talking to each other, like when you you're working on your uh, last year's project. Yeah, uh, I was good at practical and electronics. So if you have problems with your project, just call mm-hmm. this guy. He, he will understand your... your project, and he can twitter you along the way. So mm-hmm. that's what I was doing on my part-time which was mm. my full-time <laughs> so i got a lot of contact from students and mm. they were calling on the phone and we can yeah. work on their project on the phone some yeah. they were coming we sit down and so i i was getting good at it and i had mm. a lot of contact yeah so when i send all the contacts and say, okay, here's my new number. Mm. Directly, I got a, a, a call from uh, Homolemo. She's yeah. a friend. She mm. was at IGS. Yeah. She was like, I've been looking for you. Mm. This, this uh, contract at my job, mm. uh, they interviewed people, but um, come tomorrow at 10. Just yeah. send your CV to this email. Yeah. I sent my CV and I went there. The interviews were done already mm. and um, it was uh, just the project manager explaining mm. to us what we supposed to do. Mm. For me, I went there for an interview, but I found <laughs> already everything was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so it was, it was, like, it was oh, a job induction. Yes, it was a job induction already. Um, no, because the manager already looked at my CV and say, okay, well, this, the interviews have passed, but looking at the CV, uh, he can just join us on the induction. Mm. So we worked in that um, uh, the uh, project for, um, the project was about inspecting hospitals in the uh, uh, how North do you call that province? Northwest. Northwest yeah. yes. Yes. I know a lot. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you were had, you had a big engineer in that company. So, you know, you know a lot. so yeah, we went to Northwest. Mm. We inspected hospital. We traveled a lot. The all Northwest. The project was uh, very well. And it's it, for me, it was well paid. My first mm. South African Paid job. The, the first real salary. Real salary. <laughs> and oh wow, it's yeah. it's it it actually it's made me see that okay, this time it's going to go well. Mm. So um the project uh, ran like for one and a half month mm. and we completed the project. Then that was 2015. And then the next year, 2016, I got a call 
like, okay, you worked on this project and IGS has another project. So would you like to be part of I'm like, yeah, yes. Yes. Because I was still... It was good, it was good uh, money. <laughs> yes. And I was still unemployed. Yeah. So yeah. I joined and this time it was not in Northwest. It was in Heidelberg. Yeah. And I got there. And, and that's where that's time, where we met. That's where we met. Yes, yes. <laughs> like in this time, the project manager didn't care about ages mm. because he was. And I saw okay, things went well. We had a lot of inductions because it was a big site, you know. Yeah. It uh, and it came with a lot of safety precautions and yeah. a lot of conditions. Mm. Yeah, we took long to start working, but yes, mm. we did start safety working. Safety is important. Yes. Yeah. Oh, in that in that site, they took safety measures very That's seriously. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So when we started working, the position was um, uh, general worker. Mm -hmm. I had a bachelor degree in no, my it band, wasn't. No, it wasn't a general worker, no. It was. It was a general worker. Was it not, was it not um, skilled, skilled um, laborer or something like that? Or artist no, or no, something? No, no, no. No, uh, they hired us as general workers. Okay. But because there was some politics between um, people who came from IGS Johannesburg mm. and locals. Yeah. So they had to hire locals. So they promoted people from Johannesburg <laughs> to same school. <laughs> and locals were general, general workers. workers. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now I remember. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was a lot of politics there. Yeah. And, you, so, and you learned a lot, eh? Yes, I learned a lot in yeah. construction. And it made me forget the clinical engineering. Mm. The clinical engineering was um, something that I wanted to do because I was, the more interviews you get, the more readings you do, mm. and the more you learn. And those are the only positions you get call from. Yeah. But now I'm into construction and I love construction. So yeah. I was happy. I was like, okay, this is starting. Um, construction, construction. This is always. this is what you want yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what I want to do because yeah. there's there's no there's no good feeling like working on a project from scratch and you see it growing. Yeah. And the next time you pass by, you like, okay, I, yeah, I, I was, I was there. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, it's, yes. So while we were working there. It's, um there was a like a blockage where because of all the conditions on site they said um you have more than 40 um agents mm. but you have only one supervisor construction yeah. supervisor you need more supervisors so they were looking for a second supervisor and four assistant supervisors mm. and my manager Kululeko, <laughs> in the induction he's like okay guys uh, the job the work has stopped because we need supervisors mm. whoever feels like he can apply for these positions i'm waiting for your cvs just in the induction i took out my phone i sent my CV to mm. Mr. Kululeko and he called me. He's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you have a degree and you working here wearing, you know, yeah. you feel proud when you're working. Yeah. But there's a part that makes you feel bad is when you see people from Transnet or yeah. people from other contractors that are working, they have different uniforms. Yeah. And you are wearing those blue. And I don't know if you remember that site had 
Yeah. The head color is showing your position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, safety officers, they had their head colors. That's Managers, right. they had their head yeah. colors. Engineers, Supervisors, whatever, yeah. Yes, securities. And mine was green. So it yeah. means you are the <laughs> lowest. <laughs> Like so you, when you walk outside, yeah. <laughs> you outside and you see all those beautiful ladies passing in big cars, they look at yeah. you wearing green. They don't see you at all. Yeah. You like invisible. Yeah. Because I think I think for me, when when I saw your CV, like, mm-hmm. like I, I think at some point I was angry at you to say, <laughs> but uh, how the like how how do you have like such a beautiful like beautiful qualifications and mm-hmm. you've got a bachelor's in um electrical you i look at your transcripts you were getting good marks and you are here working you know <laughs> in the, in this construction at like a skilled laborer and i'm like no 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 come talk to me what's going on you know and then i think when we spoke then i was like yeah. okay now nah, i get you and i felt that you were like you, you had the maturity um but you i think you didn't have the the confidence at the time if you remember um yes um yeah. the more people you meet in the industry mm. that interviews you they check the gap that you have from your graduations mm. to to the time you are sitting with them interviewing and you have never worked mm. they kind of make you feel like you are lazy you are just sitting at home yeah, yeah. doing nothing so that kind of uh kill your confidence yeah because sometimes you go in that interview you like okay this one i qualify for it and whatever they do in that company when you read about it you mm. like i know mm. these things i'm gonna kill it and you mm. get there the managers are looking at you like oh four years sitting down not working yeah and coming here to yeah. You. So <laughs> i'll be honest because i i also i think i also <laughs> felt the same way you know cuz i yeah. i kept asking but okay what have you been doing like you graduated <laughs> <laughs> and after graduating what have you been doing and then i think you you, yeah. you spoke up about the whole tutoring and what have you and yeah. i was like yeah but okay um yeah but i think like when when you started um i think what i promoted you to assistant supervisor yes um okay. no you promoted me to supervisor supervisor so oh, okay yeah, yeah two supervisors yeah and four assistant supervisors oh, okay that's right yeah and i think uh, if i'm not mistaken <laughs> uh, you were in a deep end and you had to swim yes yes um <laughs> that promotion gave me back my confidence and yeah. the day we were going for that uh training mm. no all this talking yeah. about me you kept being surprised like i hey, man how can you have a bachelor degree and you no 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 what's yeah. going on and then you t- spoke to me about your friend who owns an electrical company you're like okay mm. let me give him a call you called him while you were driving you like mm. hey Sifiso, how is it going he's yeah. like oh. and you were like okay i have this guy mm. from congo he's struggling to get a job but he has a bachelor degree in electrical engineering mm. and um sifiso response was like okay i'm um i'm kind of in the middle of something but have him send me his cv yeah. and he he gave you his email yeah while he was spelling the email to you i was writing it on my phone mm. and i sent the cv and i told you yeah tell him i've sent the cv yeah so we were still in the car he called mm. he's like hey man i got your cv but i'm still working on one two three things yeah but when i'm ready i'll call you back 
Yeah. That gave me like, okay, there's something that, that I'm looking forward to. That's right. Even if yeah. this contract ends, there's something there's I'm something, looking forward. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it was it was really really good. Yeah. And yeah, so so now you 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 got this position as from general a gen, general <laughs> laborer <laughs> to skilled yes. laborer to uh supervisor and supervisor. you had you had uh how many assistant supervisors four of them all right and then under the yes. assistant supervisor so there was um i think there was six teams was it four teams or six teams um But there was to- um the number of domes that was the number of teams we yeah. were like 70 in total yeah 70 yeah and how many domes were there 12 yeah it was it, we were there was 12 but we were working on 10 uh, on 8 on 8 8 oh yes so yeah, we yeah. no no there was 10 and we were working on 8 okay yeah so yes and i so got... now yeah and 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 before then you had oh. no management or supervisory experience no 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 and uh that's why this project kind of kicked my career that's why they always say meeting good uh, the right people in life mm-hmm. it's um the first step was to meet homolemo yeah. from school yeah um we were talking about electronics from time to time mm-hmm. if she has a problem on her project she would give me a call hey there's mm-hmm. this and this what can i do because already i worked on it and she had the the uh, the the lecturer who was working with her on her project was the most difficult of all the lecturers yeah no matter how good you are his response is you gonna fail see you next year mm. so with homolemo she was like okay eric how did you do it because that lecture had on my time he had like he took over all the students that could not find other lecturer because mm-hmm. uh, all students run away from him yeah. but his patient is like all the lecturer when they get full mm. the rest come here <laughs> yeah. so i was part of um, yeah. his team mm. and he had like 20 students yeah. out of those 20 students i am the only one who passed sure the project yeah Okay. So every time this is this was all, UJ. Yes, this was UJ. Okay. If all the students were asking me how did you do it with him? Yeah. Actually I I failed. He told me okay, uh your project is does not qualify for uh BTEC level. Mm. See you next year. I was like, no, sir. <laughs> Tell me what I should add to my project to make it be to, to work. Yeah. He gave me the whole list, and that list, I was like, everything he's saying, I can do it. Yeah. But <clears throat> he said, I want to see it working hundred percent tomorrow at ten. Yeah. So I look at the list. He said. And I look at the project, and he wanted tomorrow by ten. Mm. And uh, after tomorrow, I had the management test. Mm. So it's either I spend all time on this project and fail anyway, mm. and then fail the management test, or yeah. just leave it fail and concentrate on management test. Mm. So I concentrated on management test, and a good friend of mine called me mm. like. What? How did it go with Mr. Fouché? That was yeah. his name. How did it go with him? I'm like, he gave me this and this and this, and my friend was like, yes, and you have done all of those. Why don't you work on your project? I'm like, I'm preparing the management test. Those mm. are a lot of things, and even if it works, he might fail me anyway. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm coming to collect you because all my friends they were driving mm. the. Um, people who are doing BTEC at UJ, most of them are working yeah, already. Yeah. Yeah, so why, why were you doing BTEC now? Um, no, I, it's like a step back that I made to go back to school. 
oh. from where I met with Homo Lemo. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Yes. So I met Homo Lemo. Homo yeah. Lemo introduced me to his uh, contract at work, and okay. from there I met you. Yeah. And you introduced me to Sifiso, who was yeah. my last boss. Yeah. So, um, hmm. working as a uh, construction supervisor, now I'm hmm. resuming from where we left off, working as a construction supervisor uh, gave me a confidence. Yeah. And um, from the training, because um, you paid for our training. Yeah. And that training gave us a management skill, how to deal with people because mm. it was 70 people is a lot. Mm. So we had to deal with safety officers, environmental officers, and... securities from the site. Yeah. And that site was just a busy one and it, mm. it was a lot. So mm. I learned a lot into yeah. supervising people and mm. how to deal with people. Mm. And then, and, and then when you moved to Kangwe, uh, uh, you you were what now? An engineer now? No, no. <laughs> now, when I got a call from Sifiso, yeah. he called me saying, okay, I have completed the one, two, three that I, I was waiting for. Are you still in the market? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And we met. He interviewed me and he was happy with my <laughs> interview. Mm. And I started working for him. And that's the time, the first time I get a permanent contract. Uh, yeah, a nice Africa. steady salary. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, no, the, the salary was less than... Yours, <laughs> then the yeah, 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 but it, a, it it was a good start for a permanent job. That's right, yeah. Because it even allowed me to apply for from critical skills to a permanent residence. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk. I wanna fast forward now to mm. you where you are now. So your whole journey. Um, so to summarize. Uh, DRC to SA, back to DRC, back to SA, and then now you are in the Netherlands, right? The Czech Republic. Oh, sorry, Czech Republic, yeah. yeah. So now you're in the Czech, Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's talk um, in the last, in this last uh, mm. segment, um, I think we've got about uh, 15 minutes or so. Let's talk yes. about how like you you like number like I, i'm just curious number one on like the thought mm. process like what made you decide to 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 start applying outside of south africa and going to like czech republic i've ne I, I wouldn't have never thought of working in czech, in the czech republic uh, <laughs> like what was the thinking like what or what motivated that Okay, um, applying uh, overseas, everywhere else was when it was not working good for me in South Africa. So with internet, I was applying now everywhere else. Mm -hmm. But this time um, I got a link from a friend saying, okay, they're looking for uh, engineers at this company. So I just took the link and I applied. Mm -hmm. And the next day I got a call because already at Kangwe, I learned a lot at Kangwe also because yeah. at Kangwe, I was an electrical technician. Okay. I was working in design and I was supervising uh, construction. Yeah. So once we design at the office, we go to sites. I am a construction manager. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot between the communication um, because Kangwe was not constructing. We were yeah. a consultant, a so we were company, hire yeah. a construction company. Yeah. Yeah. So I became a liaison between um, the customer, which was most of the time Randwater, mm. and our contractor. Yeah. So I had to 
to to take a report from the contractor and then give it to my boss and if mm. the boss is happy send then it give to it side, yeah. and yes yeah. so i i had that i developed that communication skill between mm. those uh, two parties yeah and then when i got the call from nsc mm-hmm. is the company i'm working for yeah i got the call they had a position similar it's not an electrical engineering but it's it yeah but it also requires a lot of communication between companies and their client which is mm. at&t okay. at&t is a uh, mm. telephone yeah, provider it's, it's, it's like a vodacom yes yeah. it's yeah. the mother of all the yeah, telecommunications companies yeah. yes mm. so we spoke and they saw that okay um i had i have this thing of communicating with people yeah and they saw my cv they spoke with my boss um and i don't know if you have noticed uh it's like they are thing before they hire you they talk to your boss yeah uh, so they mm. called my boss like oh yeah. how is eric how is yeah. he like and Yes, just the way they did with you. <laughs> yeah. so, and they offered me a job. Yeah. And I looked at the job, it's overseas. And I look at my past in South Africa, I was not that so likely compared to all other friends. Mm. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, maybe if South Africa is not working well for me, let me go try Continue. overseas. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So they did all the process for work permit, visa and all the thing. Yeah. Then I moved to the Czech Republic. Okay. But on a on a dollar to dollar basis does the the Czech Republic pay more than South Africa? Oh no, uh uh south africa mm-hmm. pays a lot more uh, okay so so <laughs> so you, the, you're, rent, mm-hmm. the rent is more valuable than the czech corona oh, okay the czech republic is in the uh, european union okay but they don't use euros they use mm-hmm. their, their czech own corona mm. yes and and um the the value of the um, uh currency is lower than the south african rand okay so now so 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 clearly your motivation was not money it was like no, a much it's a much bigger a, a bigger tree like a bigger vision i guess yes it was a um a an adventure <laughs> not uh, in that sense of adventure it was like new challenge yeah new country where you don't speak the language at all and <laughs> you don't know anyone mm. you you just get there at the airport mm. you're like hey here i come <laughs> yeah and and this time is worse because in sa at least you you uh, you had your uncle the side yes i had my family the yeah. in, in sa but here uh, uh it's I just don't you know anyone man. yeah um, um Actually I have a a friend mm. he's also from Congo he also passed by South Africa and now he works for IBM okay. IBM is huge yeah. he also got a job from South Africa he's the one who encouraged me to take the job because he also did almost the same thing yeah. otherwise I would have thought maybe it's um it is scam yeah. because the way they do it and at the end because I'm from Congo Yeah to apply for the visa they say okay because you are originally from Congo the um Congolese uh situation is worked by our embassy in mm. Abuja mm. so I was like oh it's Nigeria <laughs> so, <laughs> so so you you're like yes it's the I'm going to be they're going to give me a bag that's already packed <laughs> they say no climb the aeroplane and you know one thing leads yes, to another I, yeah <laughs> I get it with the embassy in Abuja they yeah. did my paperwork they sent me back and I went yeah. to the embassy in South Africa yeah. but now I work for uh NSC at AT&T 
Yeah. I communicate with um, the team I'm working in. We um, we communicate with all these big companies that AT and T supply um, internet with. Okay. So in the, in the whole, have, in the, in the in whole the of Czech world. Republic. No, in the whole world. Oh, okay. When I get a ticket from my computer, I check it's South Africa, and I call the technician on site. I say, hey, come join me for it. Hey. Yeah. And then we speak, we do whatever he has to do on site. And then the next ticket comes, it's in, it's in Malaysia, mm. and so you work with them. And then the next ticket is in USA. So you speak with people from the old world yeah. and everything it's, is done remotely. So my man, this is this is like <laughs> I don't know, like for me, like it's amazing, man. <laughs> like it's amazing. Like I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know if it's the aircon <laughs> in the room or what, but I'm getting goosebumps, man. Like oh, thank like, you, thank you. Like you just, are part of the 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 confidence you had in yeah. me. You didn't look at me like everyone else was looking at me. You know, people look at yeah. you and they judge you yeah. on the spot. They just look at you like, uh, they look at your age, they look at the lack of your experience, they judge you. They're like, yeah. oh, he, he's lazy. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lie. Like for me, like, yes, this man, like, I'm very proud of you, Joe. Like you know, I'm I'm very very proud of you. And I and think, now you did uh, get a call from my next employer. He's, yeah. Um, it's uh, annual. Yeah. Now I'm back to electrical engineering. Yeah. But now it's um I'm going to work in three fields at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, because now I I am working into uh. IT, yeah, but my background is electrical, electrical. engineering, yeah. So now my uh, next job will be IT, electrical engineering, and automation. Oh, okay. So you got that job? Yes, I oh, did. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Congratulations. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Congratulations. When are you starting? Thank you. On the first of February next okay. week. Okay. 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 So you yeah. you literally heading over on the current job now. Yes. Um. I'm left with uh, three nights to work, and okay. after that, um, I'll be done with them. Sure. So we're doing the end over stuff. They are taking back the um the access yeah. because we have access to all their customers right now if i switch on my computer i can access a router of one of their customers mm. at the end the other end of the yeah. the world i can yeah. switch off their internet i see i, I can, see so the whole site can go down yeah. just by clicking a button yeah. on my computer so they have to take back all those accesses but i still have three days they will shut me down on in the, last the next day. day. Now tell me, like, yeah. what what motivated now the move to? You said what's the name of the company that you're moving to now? Uh, annual. Annual. So what's yeah. uh, what's the motivation there? Are they is annual also um, like more global or they yes it's focus global. on? It, yes, it's global and it focus also. Okay, uh, at and is focused on the internet provision and making um, a cloud for companies so that companies stay, still use the internet, um, how do they call it, um, on their cloud. Okay. The company can have um, one office in Johannesburg, the other one in France, yeah. but they, they are... Uh, oh, sharing um, their without yeah okay I see I see yeah so but now Honeywell is oh Honeywell for, honey yes is yes, it honey honey, honey yes with bee honey yes. oh yeah I know Honeywell okay Honeywell is big yeah it's big it's huge yeah. so um they 
work with uh, manufacturing industries. Yeah, and yeah, no, they're huge. They're huge. So yeah. Huge. Yeah. So now the team that I will be working on, I will be the only electrical engineer. And mm. now my job title is electrical engineer. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> So, finally, yeah. finally, 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 man. Um, there's a lady from Canada. Yeah. She's the team supervisor. She's a chemist. Yeah. And there's a IT specialist. Um, and there is a PLC specialist. There's a mechanical engineer. Hmm. And I will be the electrical engineer. So uh, we, are, we yeah. have a team of engineers together uh, and then you you get whatever project and then you yes work, you work on the design and take yes. it from design and go to construction yes yeah. so, um, we will be working on um uh designs and maintenance okay. um all those things so from my computer, I can see all the annual customers and yeah. their automation, how it's going. Yeah. And if there is an issue that's on site they can't see, yeah. then I can call them and say, hey, check uh, this okay. machine needs this and this and that. So yeah. I will still be communicating with the customer yeah. and see what next machine they need design how they need to install it and yeah all. so now so now with the with the honeywell position you're gonna get more stamps on your passport i'm assuming is it gonna be a lot <laughs> of traveling um i had two job offers yeah. one was mainly traveling around the world and going from site to site yeah but they kind of didn't want to interview me for uh, they didn't want to give me that position because of the covid yeah they say even if we give you this position we might not hire you yet because mm. you you can't travel as needed yeah but uh, just join this team they mm. don't travel a lot yeah. mostly they work from home or oh, it's still honeywell uh, yes still oh, honeywell oh okay 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 but in case, uh, because I speak French, yeah, they will still need me on those traveling because they have also a lot of um, sites in French countries. Oh, okay. So it will be easier for me to go there, speak English, and go there, speak French. Ish, um, my yeah. man, my man. I think that's the that's the big advantage, man. Like. Yeah. You know, you know, for me, like I look at um like like people in your situation yes. that if you come from an African country where there's a like they're speaking like French or Portuguese or or Spanish or whatever, you know, like it opens up the like your opportunities a lot because yes. because now if you if you understand the English then you become like very versatile and yes yeah like exactly. you can you can literally work anywhere in the world that's true yeah because english is global yeah but still um the other languages like uh, portuguese and french they are still holding their ground and yeah it still needs a lot of uh, connection between the two so yeah. Yes, there's a lot of markets there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. You know, you know, Eric, your story is very, very motivating, you know, and I'm hoping that like anyone listening to the podcast or okay, the other thing is we we might also put it on the on our YouTube channel. Um oh. but I'll let you know. But um, but for now it's just the podcast. And yeah, like I think like anyone who's listening to the engineering in Africa podcast right now, they should be like super inspired. I know you haven't reached the point where you want to reach yet, but oh, you're eleven. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, nah, listen to this guy. Hey, stop it, man! <laughs> you know, and I think, I think, I think, like you've surpassed me. Like you know, you've you've literally surpassed me because. 
like your your international exposure like just puts you on a different level like you are on a way different level and i think like it was a good idea to move to the Czech republic and and look at the opportunities that you're getting man like it's just amazing man yeah so when as a as a as we close um there's a kid sitting in the drc he wants to be an electrical engineer someday uh what what three things can you advise that kid three things yeah um the first one is to learn as much as he can from everyone yeah because you always learn from mm. that's the thing that i learned when i was a supervisor mm. at your project sometimes you learn from the people that you didn't expect at all mm. they just come and tell you hey you see this one it's working like this because you did this do yeah. it this way yeah and you see it works it don't ever underestimate anyone yeah he yeah. might know a few things that you you never knew mm. there is one word that motivated me more yeah that you told me you said um most people want to hire people who have experience mm. they think because they have been doing the same thing and it works they think they are doing it it's the only way to do it yeah so they they don't hire new people that can come with new ways mm. to do things that might work better than what they usually uh, do exactly exactly yeah so the second thing for uh, lesson number uh, two, yeah um um always shoot for the moon yeah and land amongst moon. the stars <laughs> yeah. if your vision is just here yeah. you you can't see what's behind there mm. but if you look behind there then you'll say okay for me to get there where do i put my foot yeah right here so it will allow you to meet the right people and mm. always be in contact with the right people it's it's very nice yeah tip number 3 tip number 3 huh. learn as many languages yeah. as you can <laughs> <laughs> i agree <laughs> it opens and it opens international doors eh you know yes. yeah cuz yeah cuz i think what I, what i like from a south african point of view mm. um like what i've seen with a lot of south africans including myself like we are like we just closed up into um south africa that i'm just gonna you know get my like you know get my qualifications get my job in south africa and that's that you understand and yes when i see like a lot of guys especially like in varsity you know like when i see a lot of guys from the zimbabwe trc whatever coming to uj to study and I, oh here's a question are there any south africans who study in the trc universities Nope, I don't think you so. You see. So in the olden days, yes, yeah. but now yeah. and also our education system mm. if a South African can get the, his national diploma in U, at UJ and yeah. come to Congo to yeah. learn French Yeah. already learning english when you speak french is easier than learning french when you speak english yeah and also our curriculum it's it's not that easy yeah even as it kicks like it hard, so we are used hard. to it but yeah. it's kicking up. i don't know if you have noticed that why most congolese when they get out of the congo they mm. they shoot 
when yeah. they go whatever university they go to they just shoot they like they, oh, they, yes just distinctions and distinctions and <laughs> they put everything in it yeah and yeah, that's what i've realized you know um i remember as it mobesa i forgot his name i think it's mobesa he he used to get distinctions of distinctions on distinctions because like it's an opportunity to yes you know to to because you you you've literally went out and now it's yes. an opportunity to actually go even further you know than yes. where you were you know yeah mm-hmm. so i think like to the south africans listening to this discussion like i think we need to start thinking outside of south african borders yeah. um yeah. you know even if maybe it's not like uh, in africa but you know start thinking about you know the possibilities of actually working in the czech republic or you know um any of the other european countries you know it's a yeah. i think it's a good i have noticed that with our fellow white south african yeah a lot of them after graduating mm. they they go yeah. out of they go to Austra- uh, like australia they go to canada when us yeah. checking for, um when you check on linkedin yeah you see how many alumni are in those companies they suggest you that needs for example electrical engineers and yeah. then it shows you it's in canada but you see mm. already it has 11 uj alumni you like yeah yeah you just student already working <laughs> that a lot so yeah. yeah it's um but mostly as um black people we are not yet that open to seeing um other places yeah. unless the company he's working for Send them wherever. Yeah, yeah, but they don't just uh, look at it and say, "Oh, I'm gonna apply overseas." That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, Eric. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for your time, man. Um, thank you. Very- yeah, I'll really. send you. I'll send you the links and everything. Uh, we okay. will spend time. I think the um, the first episode will go out on the first of February. Okay. When you start. <laughs> 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 yeah so, so after my new job I will come home and um, watch uh, your show that's correct yeah <laughs> yeah thank you for being being the first first um person to join the engineering in africa podcast and yeah man i appreciate it and i wish thank you, you for the yeah, yeah i wish you all the best um on your new job Sorry. And yeah, let's let's talk after yeah, and you know after yeah, <laughs> and and see you know your journey yeah like, where you at what you're yeah. doing yeah yeah. I appreciate yes. it, Eric man. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. And thank you. Cool, man. To you. Sure man. 